I'm gonna set this phone down for a sec here. I'm gonna give some people some time to get into the room, but I'm gonna tell you this before I do anything. This is not just specific to a Freightliner Cascadia. This is all of these garbage, I mean, these trucks that they're making nowadays. Okay, so check this out. I don't think the fuse should have popped. It is what it is. It protects the wiring, protects the circuitry, and once you do that, this is a consumer product. This truck is not owned by a shop with mechanics in it, okay? Owned by me, okay? Financed by the First National Bank of me. So, what do you need if this is your product? Well, you need a good heads up because whose job is it to change a fuse if a fuse blows? Well, they're trying to make it the job of the dealership or Freightliner, okay? But it's your job. This is why you learn when you get a CDL that you're supposed to have spare fuses. Well, guess what? You're also supposed to know where they go and how to how to use them. I'm going to teach you that in this video. It's okay, people. They're making it more complicated. I'm going to make it simplified. The engineers are not building a consumer product. Okay? It's not consumer friendly. Okay? So once you understand that, it's bad engineering and bad design. There's no reason they can't number these fuse panels in a proper way so that any idiot on any corner can change the fuse. Or even like me, call me the idiot truck driver. So that the layman cannot understand this. Put it in layman's terms. Number it numerically understandable. Okay? Nobody here has gone to... ASC certification for freaking fuses. We are SOR certified, side of the road certified. In other words, we'll work until somebody gets there. If we can't fix the problem, we'll call somebody. Well, you could go to a shop, okay? I have a shop. Check it out. There's my shop. You know what I mean? Love has always got my back. They actually loaned me for this video. The guy in there loaned me a nice set of needle nose pliers because the little tool that comes with the fuse puller, see, they're always there for you. However, do you want to pay $70 or $80? It's kind of embarrassing if you got a fuse pop. And do you really want to deal with the terminal that you're leased to? Or eight? No, no, no. Oh, the cigars came from a cigar shop. That's a different shop. You know what I'm saying? I got one, got one on deck. Let's get into this. This is the panel you're going to see, okay, on 20 Twin, okay, 22 Freightliner. And over here, it says pull okay you can do this you can pull this now i don't want to hear if it's a female truck driver. well i'll break a nail no you won't put your hand in here like this okay put on your big girl pants okay so if you say oh, i'm a girl no no then be a woman and pull okay that's where i'm at so all men all women anybody you don't have to have tentacles like an octopus to drive a truck I tell everybody that anybody can be trained to drive a truck as long as you're a good driver and, and you and you can back up some people do have an issue where they can't most people can do it okay you can be trained and experience okay practice makes perfect well I'm gonna teach you this you're supposed to know this anyhow out of CDL school but they don't teach you this stuff right school of hard knocks welcome to it schools in session now what might what you might think is well if I have this truck okay I got this open here's the fuse panel which I have cleaned with alcohol okay because I'm going to make sure everybody understands where I'm at on this let's all be on the same page this is the fuse panel right here you pull these two tabs just pull on them you push in on them and pull right so check this out what I need to do for this first thing to do you might think you could look in your in your in your book, right? In your Cascadia book, right? Owner's manual? No, this thing's garbage. Okay, I'll show you that in a minute. But first thing you need to do is identify the problem. Now, where's my other glove? I'm trying these gloves out because they're supposed to be good touch screen too. They're supposed to be. I don't know. There we go. But look, first thing to do is identify the problem. You might think, well, the first thing to do is to fix the problem. No, no, no. Let's identify the problem. I'm going to set this down for a second. We're going to identify the problem. Okay. So the first problem is 
as I stated, the engineers are idiots. They're making these trucks too hard to work on for the average person. I find this to be non-helpful. You might find this to be non-helpful too. When I'm done with this video, you will know how to change a fuse and you will be thankful and you won't have to do all the work I just did to label this garbage. So in so doing and in labeling this garbage, I'm gonna call it like it is. Okay, first thing to do is identify the problem. Okay, once you have identified the problem as being the truck itself, then you can go further. We have identified the problem. The problem's in here. All right, check this out. I have marked these, all of these, okay, with their corresponding problems. All of these right here that you see before you are fuses. Now, if they had common sense, Freightliner don't have common sense, but if they did, they would number these for the consumer, okay? Now, you could say, oh, they already numbered them in the factory, and oh, no, 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 no. I don't care what you name numbered your numbers for your parts or whatever. Check this out. This is a fuse, okay? These are your spare fuses, so that you get the schematic. These are your spare fuses. And over here on this picture, at the top right, these are your spare fuses. So, you know, this way's up on the map. This way's up on the fuse box. These are your spares, top right, okay? This is a schematic. These are your spares, top right. So you could use these fuses when you blow a fuse, and you could use this little tool. However, I borrowed this from the man in the shop in there, a pair of needle nose pliers, and these actually spring back, so I, I like these. I'm gonna buy these. I happen to be, I was going through my tools, got a little short-handed. So, to keep on track here, and to show you what I'm trying to teach you, this is what I got for you. You can pull these fuses out easier with this. You gotta have needle nose or you might touch the fuse next to it. Now you can test, put a test light on the bottom and top, but you already know they're blown. Once you find out what they are, if the thing ain't working, this is a brand new truck, you already know the fuse is blown because that's what's gonna blow anyway. That's why we're in the fuse box. So if you wanna spend your time with a test light and you know you don't know what's going on because you don't know what's broken say you had a vehicle that you don't know nothing about you could test and put a good ground with the wire and the clip the alligator clip to a ground and then you could put the test light the pointy part okay the probe there okay and there and one will work and if the other one's good if the fuse is not blown the other one will work too I don't need that because I already know the fuse is blown all right now so I'm gonna show you a little something. The way they numbered these things is stupid. This right here, being the schematic, they put, instead of it being, okay, let's just go with it on the schematic side. Instead of, the, R is for relay, by the way. R23, that's a relay, okay? That don't pertain to what we're doing, but it's a relay, and there's R20. And then there's R28. How come they didn't make this R21, R22, R23? You see, they're making it more difficult for you to find your fuse. It's so bad that on this one, I'm pretty sure it was R59. I'll show you in the book. I just made an addendum to this book, okay? I'll show you what I'm doing because you're not gonna find it in this book. The only thing you'll find in this book is you'll find electrical systems. There's a picture of the back of this and you can't even read it. They used to have a glossary, an index, and they would have fuse. It got real stupid when they now don't even have this in the book. So I put it in the book. Addendum, and you can, you can take a picture of this and you can put this in your book. Radio, F56, five amp, that's one of the radio ones. F18, A and B, and F19, A and B. 20 and 25 amp, respectively. That's for the, uh, front power plugs, okay? F12 and F13, 20 amp. Sleeper, 12 volt power plug, you're welcome. F9, sleeper power plug, 20 amp. So, the problem is finding those correlating numbers, okay, on the actual panel over here. So, what you do is, 
you go in the world's smallest print and I'm fixing to show you a tool you don't have okay but I'll show you how you can also do it if you have a phone what you're gonna need for this is this tool right here I found I couldn't locate mine so I bought another one a freaking magnifying glass people that's what you need to read that garbage that's the world's smallest print I've got better than 2020 vision another engineering design flaw what am I gonna do I'm gonna print this thing out and I'm gonna make new numbers correlating with new numbers on these boxes I'm gonna blank them all out and only print the ones in there that I need which would be the front cigarette lighter plug for your GPS top and bottom cigarette lighter plugs also the power for the radio the CB radio up top if I use that and wire up my other and then also the back cigarette lighter plug for power power receptacle and then I'm gonna label these right here in the order that they should be so first I'm gonna make a whole new label and number for the bottom I'm gonna do this on a piece of paper laminate it and just shove it in this box it's got to fit in this square no big deal right but I, I can make it two pieces because this needs to be zoomed in on look at how you can't even read this you can't read that what you have to do is take a picture with your phone and zoom in on it just to even look at it so I've got two devices right check it out this is what you have to do it's stupid because I'm having to use two you could use one right you're not doing a live on YouTube trying to teach the people so here we go now let's check this out if I can get it to stay in one spot oh yeah yeah and you're gonna need a flashlight right because seriously here let me zoom out just a bit okay all right so gotta have a flashlight because you're going to have to see these numbers even a little bit of light helps even in daylight I'm in pure daylight with the door open so at night you're definitely not going to, be able to see this so need a flashlight need some as I said needle nose pliers you might need the magnifying glass unless you have a device you can look at like the one I'm using right now it works but I'm doing this live with it so let's take a look and see if I can't make this make sense it's just this book now is in the way. Move it out of the way. So I gave you the numbers. That should get you on your way. But also, you got to have the ability to take a photo of it, right? And zoom out so that you can actually read. You know what I mean? Let's see what we can do. Got to be able to read this garbage right and correlate those numbers that f4 you know r3 by the way r is for relay and f is for fuses fuses would be these tiny ones okay right here relays would be the bigger ones okay except for this one being f3 that's a block square fuse it's two fuses in one that's what they're doing now it's two fuses in one this one okay now what I did was I marked in here temporarily which ones correlate to the event that I'm having with those little stickers so you could see, okay? And then on this one over here, I put one sticker just so I could see where it's at. So I'll find something I can point with. I guess these pliers work. And then I'm gonna pull some fuses. I'm gonna go off this live, but I just wanted to teach this so you understand what you're dealing with. The book is not gonna give you a schematic. The only schematic is down here you're going to have to take a picture of it and zoom or get a microphone magnifying glass and then here's what I put on this one for right here okay is take my shades off the front power okay is that uh, f19 a and B and f18 a and B okay respectively top and bottom cigarette lighter plug sleeper power is over here that is here let me zoom so you can see maybe even so I can see how about that one right no I can't I can't use that thing that well but um, that one being f12 and f13 respectively now 
this is a is a five amp radio fuse okay just a five amp and it's f56 um kind of stupid that he put f56 right here and there's not a, a f that's like f 68 f what is it 25 see that's what i need a magnifying glass myself so i'm saying they're not in order this one's hidden right here that f56 is stupid all right so to these that being the f 16 a and b and then the f9 is a sleeper one too but the f 16 a and b is a radio um connect so i'm going to check a take a look on that so most radios have a five amp that gives them power all the time for their clock or for whatever or for that bluetooth thing that is the only thing left working is that little bluetooth phone button and then the other one is for actual power it's going to be like a 20 or 25 amp so i got all these fuses down here let's see all these fuses how many fuses do you need well if you're still popping them you need a relay that's the trick is to get a relay that actually resets itself so on the top of a fuse they have fuses that actually on the top of them instead of it saying 30 it'll be a push button momentary push button on top of them you can buy a few of those and then if you have one that keeps popping a fuse you don't have to go through a bunch of fuses now so i got fuses i just bought here i got some that i've had and i got these other ones that i'm fixing to now i got a problem it's pretty much a bunch of 20s and uh 10s and 15s and one five so i hope everybody's doing good welcome to the breakdown i just showed you in the book the book is garbage i showed you what numbers they were that pertain to your power plug problem if you have a problem with your cigarette lighter plug in the front either one of them cigarette lighter plug in the back or the um, radio and one pumps another and they're all friends and they're all holding hands so you might pop more than one thing so if your radio is not working I just showed you how to get into this thing and instead of making these like it's really stupid I want to show this again how stupid this is how badly engineered it is look if I can step up here with this wind and everything else going on okay all right and just by numbers this is a r8 which is a relay this is r21 this is r25 how come they can't make this r23 r24 and r25 and then make that r22 r21 r20 r19 r18 r17 you know what i'm saying or something even if it's sideways in this line make it correlate make it make some sense instead of hiding you know, um, where was it? Yeah, F56 up here next to F25, F68. You get it, people. So I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to make my own schematic. I don't need this garbage. There's no numbers that correlate to it over here. This is only what you want to call it. These numbers, if you didn't have these numbers, but you knew which fuse it was, it wouldn't matter. You can make your own schematic. That's what I'm going to do, like I said, because this is stupid. And I'm still going to mark these with like a Sharpie, a little dot. Maybe put a line. Might even mark it or get a sticker that says radio and stick on these. But I'm going to make a paper one with this printed bigger. And I'm going to leave all these here uh, blank, renumber them, because this I need a quick fix. I don't need college of knowledge from a freaking, you know, badly designed why would I want to learn something that's badly designed you know people so God bless you I hope you don't have fuse problems if you do you can get you some spare fuses but you have spare fuse right up here in the box and if you're a spare fuse puller I just showed you how to get into your dash and um, you'll get there but this might take you an hour if you didn't have what I already knew and you're not gonna be able to look it up in the book because it's not in the book okay it's just not in the book that's all I got for you people. And there's no index in the back of that book either.
best I could tell. I'm gonna look again. Let's see what I, I looked. I looked all across the electronics and everything else. I got nothing. Let's see if they've got any kind of printout, any kind of anything in the back. Best I saw, only thing was in the back. I didn't miss no pages. Let's look again. No, there's no index. The last page is 83 about a condenser. So, Freightliner, put an end, uh, 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 index in the back. Of, every book should have an index, especially one that's supposed to be a consumer product. <coughs> Bad design. You get an F. Freightliner, you earn the F in Freightliner. You get an F for today. Freightliner gets an F for not making a good uh, consumer-friendly, user-friendly product. But, I got you up to speed, people. So, the, the, the part of the book that I've shown, if you want, you can write that into your book. It'll help you on the time where you need your GPS to be able to plug into your power plug and your power plug pops a fuse. It happens. It happens all the time. And this is a new truck and you shouldn't have to pay a shop 60 bucks for what I just showed you. And it's also your job to change fuses. That's why it's your job to have extra fuses on board. Okay? You're not supposed to have a mechanic for this. So, it may be expecting a lot, but it's kind of your job and, and so that you don't have to pay. And so you can listen to the radio. You put in too many devices, it pops a fuse. Whatever you do, there's your answer. So, God bless you people. I'm out. Stay safe. Peace.